Hadoop Distributed File System (HDFS). Preface: Content of this lecture. In this lecture, we will cover the goals of HDFS, read-write process in HDFS, configuration, tuning parameters to control HDFS performance and robustness. Introduction. Hadoop provides distributed file system as a framework for the analysis and performance of very large data sets computations using MapReduce paradigm. Important characteristics of Hadoop is the partitioning of data and computation across hundreds and thousands of the nodes of a cluster and executing these computations in parallel close to their data. Hadoop cluster scales computations, capacity, storage capacity and IO bandwidth by simply adding commodity servers. Hadoop clusters at Yahoo spans 25,000 servers and store 25 petabytes of application data with the largest cluster being 3500 servers, 100 other organization worldwide report using Hadoop. With this introduction, let us see the picture of or overall view point of Hadoop. So, Hadoop is an Apache project. All the components are available via Apache open source license and Yahoo has developed and contributed 80 percent of the core that is core of Hadoop that is HDFS and MapReduce. HBase was originally developed at PowerShell now at Microsoft. Hive was originated and developed Facebook, Big Zookeeper, Chukawa were originated and developed at Yahoo. So, some of the Yahoo project components and the first and foremost is the SDFS that is Hadoop distributed file system and the other important component of Hadoop project is the MapReduce that is distributed parallel computation framework. Now, let us see the Hadoop distributed file system, some of the design concepts and then we will go in more detail of SDFS design. Now, the first important thing is about a scalable distributed file system. That means, we can add more disk and we can get a scalable performance that is one of the major design concepts of SDFS in realizing the scalable distributed file system. Now, as you add more, you are adding a lot of disk and this will automatically scales out the performance as far as the design goal of SDFS is concerned. Why this is required is because if the data set is big and very large cannot fit in to one computer system. So, hundreds and thousands of computer systems are used to store that file. So, hence the data of a file is now divided into the form of a blocks and distributed onto this large scale infrastructure. So, that means the distributed data on the local disk is now stored on several nodes. This particular method will ensure the low cost commodity hardware usage to store the large amount of information by distributing it across all these multiple nodes which comprises of low cost commodity hardware. The drawback is that some of the nodes may get failure that we will see that it is also included as per the design goal of SDFS and the low cost commodity hardware is to be used in this 
particular manner. A lot of performance out of it is achieved because we are aggregating the performance of hundreds and thousands of such commodity low cost hardware. So, in this particular diagram we see that we assume a number of nodes let us say node 1, node 2 and so on node n. These nodes are in the range of hundreds and thousands of the nodes. And if a file is given, file is broken into the to the blocks, and these blocks are now having a data which will be distributed on this particular kind of setup. So, in this particular example, we can see that a file is there and that file is divided into the blocks, file data is in divided into the data blocks and each block is stored across different nodes. So, we can see here all the blue colored nodes, blue color blocks of these nodes are storing a file data. So, hence the file data is now distributed onto this local disk in HDFS. So, hundreds and thousands of the nodes are available and their disk is being used for storing. Now, these comprises of the commodity hardware. So, they are prone to the hardware failure and as I told that that this design. So, they are prone to the hardware failure. So, the design needs to handle the node failures in this particular case. So, SDFS design goal is to handle the node failures also. So, another aspect is about the portability across heterogeneous hardware. Why? Because there are hundreds and thousands of commodity hardware machines they may be having different operating system and the software running. So, hence this heterogeneity also requires the portability support in this particular case. That is also one of the SDFS design goals. Another important design goal of SDFS is to handle the large data sets. So, the data sets, so the file size ranging from terabyte to the petabytes that is huge file or huge data set is also now being able to be stored here in SDFS file system. So, it provides a support of the handling the large data sets. Also enable the processing with the high throughput. So, that means how this is all ensure the processing with the high throughput that we will see and it has kept as one of the important design goals of SDFS. Now, let us understand the techniques to meet these design goals. The first of this technique is called a simplified coherent model that is which is nothing but write once and read many times. This will simplify the number of operations. Hence, since we are going to write once and read many times, so most of the design will be based on that coherent model. Another technique which will meet these design goals which we have seen in the previous slide is about the data replication. Now, since there is a possibility of hardware failures or a failing of these nodes which are of commodity hardware. Therefore, the data blocks which are stored in this particular SDFS file system is replicated at more than one nodes and hence the data replication is the technique which will be uh, there to handle the hardware failures. So, by data replication means the data blocks will be spreaded across different nodes and at more than one times these replications are there. The same piece of data is now available on different nodes using replication. 
So, it is not that only one copy of a data is stored, but the replication factor or replication factor will tell how many different uh, same piece uh, of data is stored on how many nodes. So, even if that node is failed or a rack is failed, even then there is a possibility that the data is available and uh, it will overcome from such failures that is done through the hardware data replication. Another important technique which basically ensures the uh, high performance throughput is that it will be moved to the computation rather computation will be moving close to wherever the data is there hence uh, we are not moving the data around and this will improve the performance and the throughput of the system. Another technique which is used to meet the SDFS design goal is that we will relax some of the POSIX requirements to increase the throughput. For example, when I write uh, by the client, then the write operation will keep on doing the cache at the client's end. So, this basically is the relaxation of the POSIX and this will increase the throughput that we will see later on in this particular part of the discussion. So, this is the basic architecture of SDFS which comprises of a single name node and multiple data nodes and which supports the two operations which are write and read by the clients. So, and whenever this particular client want to do a read operation, a write operation then it has to contact to the name node, try to find out the data nodes where these particular uh, blocks of a file need to be written and out of them one the client will write to the closest of these data blocks and that particular data block in turn will replicate through the other data nodes and that particular data node in turn will replicate to the uh, other data node which is the which is in the same rack. So, this way the entire uh, operation that means uh, this writing on a one block and then uh, replicating uh, at other data nodes will happen uh, at the same point of time hence the write is done in a pipeline mode. this will increase the throughput of this write operation. Similarly, whenever a read operation is required by the client, then this client will contact to the name node, try to find out the blocks or data nodes where that blocks are stored and out of them the client will prefer to read from the data block which is very close to that particular client. In this way, the throughput is increased. So, therefore, a name node and a data node together will uh, which constitutes the architecture of SDFS is able to support this large scale data storage and also ensure the computations at that place with a high throughput. So, let us see the SDFS architecture again uh, and describe its key components. So, a single name node that we have seen uh, is nothing but a master server that manages the file system name, name space and basically regulates access to these files from the client and also keep track of where the data is on the data node and where the blocks are distributed essentially. So, single name node will store the meta data that means the information about the data where it is, is stored on the data nodes is maintained by the name space. Now, as far as the data which is actually stored on the data multiple data nodes. So, that means one typically one per node in a cluster is there that is maintained by the name node information and which is used to store uh, the, the data locally. So, the basic functions here in this key components are that uh, of SDFS is to manage the storage on the data nodes where the actual data is managed or is stored and read and write 
request are being initiated by the client into the SDFS support in the SDFS architecture. Similarly, for the block creation, deletion and the replication is all based on the instructions from the name node. So, name node is basically managing the entire operations of uh, the data placement, data access in terms of block creation, deletion and replication. So, we have seen that in the original SDFS design there is single name node and a multiple uh, data nodes and these data nodes will manage the storage that is nothing but a blocks of data and these data nodes are serving for the read and write request from the initiated by the client and also these data nodes will perform the block creation, deletion and replication. Now, let us see what is new in Hadoop version 2.0. So, SDFS in a version Hadoop 2.0 or SDFS 2.0 uses the SDFS federation. That means that it is not a single name space, but it is a federation as that is called SDFS name node federation. So, so this particular federation will now have multiple data nodes and multiple name nodes are there and this will increase the reliability of the name node in this case of federation. So, it is not one name node, but it is n number of name, name nodes and uh, this particular method is called the SDFS federation. The benefits is to increase the name space scalability, earlier there was one name space, now it has a uh, federation of name space. So, obviously, the scalability is increased and also the performance is increased and also the isolation. Performance is increased why because now uh, the, the, the nearest name space is used to serve uh, the, the client's request and isolation means if let us say a high uh, requirement, a high uh, large amount of resource requirement is there for a particular application, it is not going to affect the entire uh, a single name space, why because it is a federation of name space, other applications is not going to be affected by uh, a very high requirement uh, for a particular application that is called isolation. Now, in SDFS uh, uh, version 2 or in Hadoop version 2, how this all is done, let us go and discuss. Now, here uh, as we have mentioned that instead of one name node here, now we have multiple name node servers and they are managing uh, the name space, hence they becomes a multiple name space and the data is now stored in the form of a block pools. So, now this uh, block pool uh, is also going to be managed across these data nodes on uh, uh, the, the nodes of the cluster machines. So, it is not only one node, but uh, several nodes are involved and they will be storing the uh, block pools. So, there is a pool associated with each name node or a name space and these pools are essentially spread out uh, over all the data nodes that we will see uh, in the further uh, picture. So, here you can see in this particular diagram that the name space it has multiple name space, name space 1, name space 2 and so on up to name space n. Let us assume that it has multiple name spaces and each name space is having a block pool. So, these are called block pools and these block pools are stored on the nodes. So, they are on different nodes just like uh, uh, a cluster machine. So, each block pool is stored on a different node. So, different nodes are there and this is going to manage the multiple name space and this is called the federation of the block pools. So, hence uh, now it is not a single point of failure even if one or more name node name space or a name node fails it is not going to affect anything and it also increases the the performance, uh, reliability and uh, throughput and also performs, also provides you the isolation. So, if you remember the original design you have only one name space and a bunch of data nodes. So, the structure looks uh, like similar, but 
uh, internally it is managed as uh, the federation. So, you have a bunch of name nodes now instead of one name node and each of these name nodes is essentially right to these uh, pools, but the pools are spread out over the data nodes just like before uh, this is where the data is spread out and you can grasp over the different data nodes. So, the block pool is essentially the main thing that is different in um, Hadoop uh, version uh, or SDFS version 2. So, SDFS performance measures if we see that uh, here we see that determine the number of uh, blocks for a given file for a given file size and uh, the, the key uh, SDFS and the system components are affected by the block size uh, and impact of using a lot of small files on SDFS and, and SDFS system. So, these are some of the performance measures uh, that we are going to uh, tune the parameters and uh, measure the performance. Let us summarize it again all these different uh, tuning parameter for performance and so basically the number of uh, how many uh, number of blocks for a given file size and uh, this is required uh, to be uh, known in uh, so basically we will see there is a performance measure or or basically there is a trade off uh, in the number of blocks uh, to be replicated. The another key component is about the size of the block. So, here the block size uh, which varies from 64 MB to 128 MB. So, if the block size is 64 then uh, what is the performance and if we increase the block size then what will be the performance. Similarly, the number of blocks that means how many uh, this is the replication if the replication factor is 3 that means every block is replicated on 3 different nodes for a given file size. So, if the replication is 1 then obviously, we are uh, saving lot of space, but performance we are going to sacrifice. So, there is a trade off between this and another important parameter for SDFS performance is about the number of small files uh, which are there on the SDFS. So, if there are lot of small files which are there in SDFS the performance goes down we will see how and how this uh, particular problem is to be overcome in the further slides. So, let us uh, see that recall again the SDFS architecture where the data is distributed on the local disk on several nodes. So, here in this particular picture we have shown several nodes where data uh, is divided and that is called distributed data on different local disk it is stored. Now, the data is stored in the terms of block and the block size is going to matter much in the performance the default block size 64 MB megabytes and this is good for a large files. So, if there is a file size of 10 GB then this particular file is broken into uh, 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 160 blocks of size 64 uh, megabytes. So, 160 blocks we have to just store uh, in a distributed manner on several nodes and therefore, this particular block size is going to mat uh, matter much. So, if we increase the number of or the size of the block then obviously, it will be less than 160 blocks. So, if the number of blocks are more hence the parallel operations is more possible and that we are going to see about what is the, what is the uh, effect of keeping the small block size of 64 or a more than 64. So, the importance of the number of blocks in a file. So, if the number of uh, uh, blocks are more then the amount of uh, memory which is used in the name node will be more in that case. So, for example, here every block that you create basically every file could be a lot of blocks we saw in the previous case 160 blocks and if you have a million of files and this uh, that millions of objects essentially uh, is required uh, uh, to basically store 
that amount of uh, uh, space in the name node to manage it and it becomes uh, several times uh, bigger uh, if, if let us say the number of blocks are more and the files are more. So, we will see this kind of uh, importance of the number of blocks. So, it is going to affect into the size uh, into the name node and it measures how much memory is going to be used in the name node to manage that many number of blocks of a file. Now, the number of uh, uh, map tasks also is going to uh, matter much. For example, if the file is divided into 160 blocks, so at least 160 different map functions are required to be executed uh, to cover entire data set operations or computations. So, hence if the number of blocks are more, not only it is going to take more space in the name node, but also more number of map uh, functions also require to be executed. Hence, uh, uh, there has to be a trade off. Similarly, if there is a large number of small files, this will impact on the name node. Why? Because a lot of memory is required to store uh, the information of this uh, uh, number of small files. Hence, uh, the network load is going to increase uh, in this uh, particular case. So, if there is a large number of small files, there is a performance issue uh, or a problem of a performance. Uh, so, uh, suppose you have 10 GB of data to process and you have all in a lots of 32 KB of a file size, then we are end up with so many number of map tasks. So, huge list of tasks are now queued up and the performance will go down. Why? Because uh, uh, when they spin up and spin down, there is a latency involved and because you are starting up the Java and stopping them and also it is inefficient due to the disk I/O with the small sizes. So, SDFS is uh, therefore optimized for a large file size. So, a lot of small files is bad and the solution to this particular problem uh, is to merge and concatenate different files or there is a operation which is called sequence files. Several files are merged together in a sequence and that is called a sequence file and which is treated as one big file instead of keeping many number of small files. Another solution to the small number of uh, lots of small number of files is uh, using the HBase and Hive configuration uh, for this particular large number of small files. So, they will uh, be used to optimize uh, this particular issue and also there is uh, uh, also another solution is to combine the input file input format file input format. Now, let us see in more detail about read and write processes which is there in SDFS how it is being supported. Now, the read process in SDFS if we see that uh, uh, first of all we have to identify that there is a name node and this is the client and there are several data nodes. In this example, we are having one name node and there are three data nodes and there is a client which will uh, perform the read operation. So, so the SDFS client will then uh, request to read a particular file. This is the read operation and this particular request will go to the name node to know the, the blocks where that uh, read operation is to be <coughs> executed and the data is to be given back to the to the client. So, it will send the request to the name node and then name node will give back this information uh, back to this particular uh, client end of SDFS and from there it will have two options whether to read from the block number 4 or to read from the block number 5 then it will try to read uh, the, the one which is the closest one and this particular data is given back to the client. Now then let us see the write operation which is initiated again by the client. So, whenever there is a client wants to do a write operation 
and uh, this particular write operation uh, is now uh, going to be uh, requesting the name node to find out the, the data node which can be used to store uh, uh, the, the client's data. And after getting this information back, this particular write operation is being performed on this particular data node, which is uh, 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 which is the closest one and that particular data node has to do this replication. If let us say replication factor is 3, then it will do uh, this in the form of a pipeline. So, the client uh, will write down or will write the data on a particular data node and that data node in turn will uh, carry out the pipeline for the replication. This is called a replication pipeline. And once the replication is over, then it will send the acknowledgement and the write operation is completed in this particular process. Now, let us see in more detail about SDFS uh, tuning parameters. So, SDFS tuning parameters we are going to see especially the DFS block size from that viewpoint and also we will see the name node, data node and all these uh, different tuning parameters. Now, as far as tuning parameter is concerned in SDFS, there is a file XML configuration file uh, and for example, SDFS site dot XML file is there where this particular environment or configuration parameter can be set. In some of the cases like uh, um, uh, Cloudera uh, supports uh, automatic uh, GUI uh, for these uh, configurations or uh, tuning parameters of SDFS that is uh, through the management console. Let us see what are the parameters which are most important which need to be uh, uh, decided for performance uh, from uh, performance perspective. Now, here SDFS block size recall that impacts how much name node memory is used, the number of map tasks that are showing up and also have the impacts on the performance. So, the by default the block size is 64 megabytes and typically uh, it can go up to 128 megabytes and it can be changed based on the workloads. So, if let us say that we want to have a, a better performance and the size file size is too big too large then obviously more than 64 megabytes is good enough for that. Uh, so, so, the parameter that this uh, make this particular changes is uh, known as DFS block size or DFS block dot size where we have to mention about the, uh, the, the, uh, the block size. By default it is 64, but we can increase up to uh, 128 megabytes. So, if the uh, if the block size is more obviously the number of uh, blocks will be will be less and if it is less than the amount of space which is required to store in the name space memory will be less and also uh, uh, if it is less and also the number of map tasks uh, which will uh, be required to execute also will be less and uh, so basically there is a trade off where the performance uh, is required. So, we have to set this block size accordingly uh, application. So, another parameter is called the SDFS replication by default the replication is 3 and this parameter is uh, set in a DFS replication uh, configuration uh, file and there is a trade off uh, that means if we uh, lower uh, it to reduce the replication cost uh, that means, if the replication uh, factor is not 3, if it is less then the replication cost will be less, but the trade off is that it will be less robust, robust in the sense if some of the nodes are failed and there is only one replication there is no replica available of that node. So, that particular data will not be available. So, hence it will be less robust and also the it will lose the performance. For example, uh, if it is replicated then it will be able to serve uh, that particular uh, data block from the closest possible um, uh, data block to the client. So, higher replication can make data local to the more workers, lower replication means more uh, uh, space. 
lot of other parameters are there which uh, uh, can be set, but these two parameters which we have covered and uh, that is block size and replication factor are the two most important uh, uh, tunable parameters. So, the other uh, such uh, parameters are available for example, uh, uh, DFS data node uh, dot handler count is 10 that means the number of uh, the server threads on each uh, data nodes uh, that is uh, maximum up to 10 and this is going to be uh, 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 a, a factor of uh, this performance uh, of uh, the data node operations. Uh, similarly, there is another parameter which is called name node uh, FS limits that is the maximum blocks per file that is maximum number of blocks per file is also set uh, as per this one. So, let us see the uh, SDFS performance and its robustness. So, the common failures uh, is a data node failure and the server can fail, disk can crash and the data also can become corrupt in that case uh, the, the uh, replicas uh, is uh, will be able to uh, overcome from this particular failures. Another failure is called network failure sometimes there is a corruption of network or a disk issues. So, it could lead to the failure of the data node uh, in SDFS. So, uh, when a network go down then uh, if, if let us say it is replica, replicas are across uh, the, the rack then it can be able to serve uh, from the other place. Similarly, name node if it is failed and uh, it could be name node failure, a disk failure on the name node uh, on the name node itself it could uh, corrupt this particular process. So, the federation is there to uh, overcome from this name node failures. So, SDFS robustness uh, uh, we have so far discussed and uh, so therefore, the replication uh, on the data node is done so that uh, it is a, a rack fault tolerant that means, the replicas are across rack. So, that if the one rack is down the uh, it will be able to serve uh, from the other uh, end. So, name node receives the heartbeats and uh, block the report from uh, uh, this one uh, data nodes. So, all this is measured and uh, whenever there is a uh, data node down uh, this information is captured or understood and the name node and that particular node is now not uh, being used by for the client uh, for the request. Now, the mitigation of common failures. So, periodic heartbeats from data node to the name node is done that we have seen and data nodes uh, without recent heartbeats. Uh, is being uh, marked. So, mark the data and the new input output uh, 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 new I O that comes up is not going to uh, be sent to that node uh, data node. Also remember that name node has the information on all the replication information for the files on the file system. So, if it knows that data node fails which blocks will follow that particular replication factor. Now, this replication factor is set for the entire system. So, you could set it for a particular file when you are writing to a file either way the name node knows which block falls below the replication factor and it will restart the process to replicate to re-replicate. So, therefore, let us see this particular diagram that this is the name node and it keeps on checking the data nodes several data nodes. So, these data nodes keeps on sending their heartbeats at a periodic interval and by that particular heartbeats the name node knows that these particular data nodes are active. If the heartbeats is not uh, received at the name node, name node now understand that this is down and if it is down then uh, this particular replication factor is basically is reduced for that uh, particular replicas stored on that data node. So, the name node knows which of that block falls below the replication factor and it will restart the process to re-replicate. So, that number of uh, so that replication factor is maintained at all points of time. 
and that particular data data node uh, which is down which is uh, detected as down will not be used for further uh, usage. So, the migration of common failure is handled by the name node in this particular manner with the help of uh, the periodic heartbeats. Mitigation of other common failures such as uh, checksum computed on a file uh, which shows that the data or a block is uh, corrupted or a checksum is stored uh, in the SDFS namespace also uh, uh, tells that it is failed and used to check the retrieve data and reread the alternative uh, alternate replicas. So, that means that uh, whenever there is uh, using checksum if it is directed that the data is uh, replica is uh, not uh, or the data which is accessed is uh, having an error using some failure then alternative replica is uh, uh, consulted up or is being accessed and uh, then uh, it will be uh, also uh, made the um, uh, proper uh, corrections wherever there is a failure. So, multiple copies of uh, central metadata structure is being uh, maintained to handle with these common failures and failover to stand by the name node is there uh, uh, and normally it is manually uh, done by default. Now, uh, let us see the performance issue that if we change the block size and the replica factor, replication factor, uh, how is it going to improve the performance. Let us take an example of a distributed copy operation, Hadoop supports a distributed copy that allows the parallel transfer of the files. Now, there is a trade off uh, between the replication uh, trade off with the respect to the to the robustness. Uh, before we start, uh, the idea is that if we reduce the replication factor, uh, then uh, it is going to affect to the robustness. For example, if let us say it is not replicated to the other data nodes and if that data nodes containing that data or a block fails then it is not available at other end. Hence, uh, it is going to affect the robustness. So, replication is so important that we are going to discuss. So, one performance trade off is actually when you go out to do some of the map reduced jobs having replicas gives additional locality possibility, but the big trade off is the robustness. In this case, we said no replica might lose a node or a, or a local disk can't recover because there is no replica. Hence, uh, if replication factor uh, is uh, is not in the so if the replication so no replica uh, is available if no replica is available then obviously uh, it is lead to a failure and hence there is no uh, hence it is not robust. Similarly, uh, with the data corruption. Uh, and if we get the checksum that is bad and we cannot recover why because we do not have any replica and other parameters uh, uh, changes have uh, similar effects. So, basically there is a trade off between the replica and the robustness. So, in conclusion in this lecture we have discussed the SDFS, SDFS version 2 and the operation that is read and write which is supported in SDFS. We have also seen the main configuration, we have also seen the performance um, uh, parameters and the tuning parameters uh, with respect to the uh, block size and the replication factor to uh, ensure about the SDFS performance and its robustness trade off. Thank you.